Okay, morning everybody. It's a fine Somerset morning. It's a beautiful spring morning today in the lab. Okay, and we're going to find out about the motor effect of electricity and magnetism. Here we go. Okay, your objectives then. Okay, so you've got objectives, and they're all about understanding how electricity affects electric currents. Okay, normal setup, three things to do. Don't forget with your own words learning summary, okay, we should be seeing something about what you've learned, not what you've been learning about. So it's saying a fact about something that you've learned, it's saying some of the facts that you've learned, okay, it's not saying just what you've learned about that day or in the video. So please make sure you get your own words learning summary right at the end and then you can be wise. Okay, everything here from the channel tunnel train to, uh, to your iPhone, what do they all have in common? Well, inside they've all got something that makes them move, some kind of electric motor. Let's have a quick look and see if we can find out a little bit more about these things. Let's connect up to our mm. webcam here. Okay, I've got a big magnet here. Okay, as you can see, it's a good sized magnet. I've got a piece of wire in between and it's connected up to the power supply over here. I turn the power supply on. Whoa, what happened there? Piece of wire jumped out. Show you again. Here we go. On, and the wire jumps out. Okay, there's nothing we can do to stop that wire from jumping up. If I turn the magnet around, okay, the wire jumps down. If I change the current around, the force changes direction again, and the wire flips out. So that's all about jumping wires. Let's have a look. Okay, on the summary, when a current flows through a wire that's in a magnetic field, there's a force on a wire. That's our first fact. Well, why does that happen? Well, obviously it's all to do with magnets. We've got two kinds of magnet here. We've got a permanent magnet and an electromagnet. Let's have a quick look at something to do with permanent magnets. Over here, okay, back to the other camp. Okay, over here I've got four magnets, oh no, permanent magnets over here, sorry, get it right. Here's a permanent magnet, okay, just a little permanent magnet, and I'm sure you've all seen this. If I put the permanent magnet under my piece of paper, and shake on a load of iron filings, shake, 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 shake. We start to see the shape of the magnet, and if I keep shaking, keep shaking, keep shaking, okay, hopefully what you see happening is you're starting to get a pattern of magnetic field lines. There we go. Starts to make a pattern of magnetic field lines. Here's one I made earlier. Okay. There's the pattern, field lines go from north to south. If I got that magnet and bent it around into a U-shape, we'd have a pattern that looks something like that. Okay, field lines always point from north to south. So, as our next key fact, okay, field lines point from north to south. So, you can have a piece of metal and permanently magnetise it and it will give you a field pattern something like this. Or we can have an electromagnet. Let's have a look at electromagnets. Okay, here then, set up, I've got a power supply connected up to this clamp stand. Okay, so it goes all the way to the top and all the way down underneath the box. So electric current is going to be flowing, that's my little arrow there, I. Okay, electric current flows down through there. If I turn the field on, look at the compasses, look what happens to the compasses. They all switch around and they line up in a circle around the field. Now if I turn that round, then now I've got current flowing upwards, okay, I for current, and turn this on again, turn it on, and again they all line up around the field. If I show you my hitchhiker rule, thumb up, and the points all point around in this direction. Okay, so, electromagnets, electric currents make their own magnetic field. And there's the shape of the field, okay? It just goes round and round using your right hand thumb, okay? 
If this is the direction of the current, that's the direction of the field lines. OK, so electromagnets have their own magnetic field. Let's see what the uh, naked scientist has to say about it all. Okay, so this is the famous Fleming's left hand rule, first finger field, second finger current, thumb motion or thrust. Okay, um, here's a neat little thing which shows you how that all goes together. So you've got the, the concentric circles pattern from the wire, from the current. Okay, you've got the permanent magnet with its own field. Just move me out of the way there. That's it. Okay, that's got its own field going from north to south. Field lines point from north to south. Okay, then if we add it together, we get a uh, catapult field like this because they cancel out above and add up underneath. And that then, okay, produces a force on the wire, which is upwards. So that's how the left hand rule works. Oops, where's my left hand? There. Okay, so if you scale it up big time, this is something that you get. Okay, this has come from NASA. It's come from uh, BAE Systems. This is the biggest example of this in the world. Okay, here's the man who's putting in the projectile. Okay, it's made of metal. It needs to conduct electricity. Okay, uh, they're going to fire it up. Okay, so we've got enormous magnets here and an enormous current flowing through that piece of metal. As it does so, it gets thrown forwards by this force, and as you can see, it's moving pretty fast. Okay, you might see it in a second. Uh, moving down the range there, several sonic booms, it's moving at something like 20 times the speed of sound. So that is uh, a weapons application, it's called a rail gun. Okay, let's have a look. So we can increase the force with more current or a stronger magnet. Here's another example from James Bond. Okay, I'm glad I wasn't at a tea party. Here's an example from Japan. Okay. Uh, thinking you missed it, that train is moving at 300 miles an hour. Here we go. That's a real train. You can get on that train and go from city to city at 300 miles an hour. That's pretty quick. Okay, again, it's floating on a magnetic field and it's being pushed along by uh, the motor effect, Fleming's left hand rule. Okay, now you're actually going to make a motor in class. You're going to turn a part of junk like that into an electric motor that works like this. Here's one some students made for me last year. 
beautifully smooth one of the best okay let's see how that can be made first you need some permanent magnets okay the bit that spins in the middle is called the rotor it's got coils of wire wrapped around it to carry the current uh, it's got these little brushes to make sure the current gets into the coils without the thing getting tangled up okay that bit where the current goes from the power supply into the rotor into the coils is called the commutator okay naked scientist will tell us a bit more about that Opposite directions. This means that the two sides of the loop will feel forces in opposite directions. Okay, and if they're in opposite directions, that's going to twist the motor around. Oh dear, playback error, doesn't like me today. Try again. The loop back again. There we go. This means that the motor can't rotate by more than half a turn. To solve this, we need to swap the direction the current is flowing in around the loop. This reverses the forces on the loop so it can keep turning. One way to do this Gotta make sure the wires don't get tangled. Split in two places. This is called a split ring commutator. Each half of the commutator is connected to a different side of the loop. To visualize how this works, we need to look at the loop side on. The two halves of the commutator make contact with two stationary brushes, which are connected to the positive and negative terminals of a battery causing a current to flow in the loop, making it rotate. When the brushes cross the gap between the two halves of the commutator, the direction in which the current is flowing in the loop is reversed. This in turn reverses the direction of the force the wire feels, so it carries on turning. This is an example of a very basic motor. In reality, the motors used in domestic and industrial appliances use multiple loops of wire in a coil rather than just one. With this arrangement, because the wire is passing through the magnetic field many times, much larger forces can be so generated. So more coils the makes a bigger power. force. You want lots of coils of wire because each one, the, the force adds up. The is to shape the magnets so that they pack tightly around where the loops rotate. You want big strong magnets. The magnetic field greatly increasing the force developed by the wire coils. It's also possible to use electromagnets instead of permanent magnets. This is achieved by winding a set of wire coils around the outside of a motor. When a current is passed through the wire coils, it produces a magnetic field, just as a permanent magnet would. Okay, so, to make a strong motor, you need lots of coils of wire, because each one has the same amount of force, so they add up and multiply up, and you often use big strong magnets, like electromagnets, to produce the field on the outside. So, quick label diagram for you. Okay, you can stop the video and check out all the labels. Okay, the field from the coils interacts with the permanent magnets, and makes the motor spin. Ooh, here we go. So, just add that into your summary, okay? Uh, a little bit more about that thing, the commutator at the end, batteries which reverses the current for us. Current. So motors that run off batteries are DC motors. They have two permanent magnets, a coil of wire which is free to spin, and two electrical contacts called brushes. These touch a split ring commutator, which allows the current to flow through the coil of wire. For simplicity, only one coil of wire is shown here. It appears white when a current flows through it. While current flows, the coil of wire becomes an electromagnet, with a red north pole on top and a blue south pole on the bottom. Because north attracts south, the red face of the electromagnet attracts the blue face of the permanent magnet. Also, red repels red and blue repels blue. This push and pull between the electromagnet and the permanent magnets makes the coil turn. As the electromagnet moves through the vertical position, it turns off and on. This switching mechanism ensures that the top part of the coil is always red and the bottom blue. The push and pull between the electromagnet and the permanent magnets is always in the same direction. So the coil continues to rotate. 
Okay, so every time the coil turns over, you've got to change the direction of the current in it, otherwise uh, it won't continue to spin. And that's what the commutator does. It stops the wires getting tangled up and keeps the current flowing correctly. Okay, final thing. Just wanted to show you this. Okay, here's an example of one of these real motors. Okay, here we go. This one's come from a washing machine. As you can see, it's got lots and lots and lots and lots of cores of wire and this great big uh, metal iron core here to make for a strong magnetic field. And that's what it needs to spin your washing at 1200 revs per minute. Okay, so check your objectives, make sure you've got it all done. Remember you've got three steps, so you need to do your own words learning summary and then don't forget the questions. How's how to do an own words learning summary. And that's all folks, thanks very much.